Hello and welcome. I've decided to expand on my video around, well, super brewers taking advantage of dropper item distribution. What is a super brewer? Well, it's a brewer where instead of one brewing station, you have multiples all brewing the same potion. So to use it, for example, we come up here and we just say, well, we'd like to put in a little bit of nether wart, a little bit of melon. Some spider's eyes. And you'll notice that it works at how many items it needs to take. So we're using nine brewing stands. So it just takes nine out of each pile I put in. And then you can see that it's lined it up for this brewing item, this brewing stand. But it's also lined it up for all of these other brewing stands as well. So that one has the melon in it, and it's already got the other items lined up. And when it's finished, just press the button and send all the items into this box. Now it works pretty simply. You have some observers facing over the top of droppers. And when we um, have our items go through, these will fire in a pattern that makes it so that exactly one item from, well, each of the first nine in this dropper ends up in each of the hoppers below. And this is done by a little beta circuit and a little bit of um, redstone subtraction. This should be nearly done. I think the gunpowder's the last of it. There we go. Let me just press our button. And our little shulker box is filled up. Now this will be good for um, stocking a potion shop or whatnot. Um, but because we are basically using the block update order to jump over hoppers with the droppers, um, this is a bit of a orientation specific. So east, if you're facing east as you look into it, works great. South, works great. West, um, have to modify the design slightly. And north, only one orientation works. I couldn't get the north facing that way to work. But to build it, it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you're facing east or most directions, what you do is you start by creating a line of blocks to lock the hoppers underneath the brewing stands. Put some hoppers facing along here, some hoppers facing into your output. And we're going to take a signal to swap over the locking. So when we press this button, it runs this redstone dust into that. It doesn't really have to be a target block but that locks the hoppers underneath the brewing stands. And with a one tick delay to match the torch, unlocks the water filling ones. Now these hoppers, you really want to have some blaze powder as well. And this is going to keep the blaze powder fueled in here. We also leave a gap for the water bottles. Water bottles come along these hoppers on that line, which then drops into these ones when it's unlocked from this water filling station. The water filling station is basically a comparator looking at the first hopper in the line. Observer, dropper facing into a dispenser. The dispenser faces into a water block. Now you don't have to use the new routes, but it's just an easy way to get one block of water. We just put our empty bottles in here. So that fills our water, that fills our blaze powder, and also makes it so that we can swap water bottles for potions and start the cycle again. And then we just have the distribution. So the distribution is a line of double observers facing above our droppers with a redstone dust signal running around this way that drops down one level. And then a comparator in subtract mode. This composter is on level four. Um, anything that can create a level four signal works. You just can't use anything that takes a redstone signal. So I do suggest using a composter. They're pretty cheap to build. And pretty easy to get to level four. You should be able to find some seeds or something to stuff in there. And this is just a fader spot. So the comparator faces into the same block as a repeater on two ticks. And then a comparator facing away from this comparator here. A couple of redstone dust. And finally, we just need something to kick it off. So we have a observer on a sticky piston pushed by a comparator. So that when we put some items in here, that pushes this, does a raising edge detection, sends it to two dots. 
and runs it through the trader clock. This will create, you know, signals from from nine here down to eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, moving each of the items along. And that's pretty much it. Um, that's all you need to do if you're facing east. Um, you can do it flipped over, still works on east. Same with north, uh, flipped over or not, same pattern. If you're facing west, you might have to do this. So we've basically taken um, these two uh, comparators here and sort of flip them over and move the block well we still have the block here but we're not using it anymore we moved it over here so that's the west orientation again works for flipped so you still have to do that for the west orientation flipped and finally we have the north i could not get this approach for north working however the flip thing does work for north in the other direction now if you're not very good at working out which way you face you can't just listen to it so if we put a lever here, we can sort of do a test. We can hear it. That sounds good. Whereas if it's on the bad orientation, it'll sound a bit different. You can hear that slower pattern. You can also watch the observer pulses. So what we would want is one on that first one, two on the second one, three on the third one. You can sort of see that in this case, it's dropping down by two at a time. So we're missing pulses. This is to do with the block update order in that orientation. So just to show what it looks like in the good orientation. A bit hard to watch, but you'll notice that we get one pulse in the last one, two in the second, three in the third, and so forth. Um, and that's about it. That's how you brew nine sets of potions all at once. Pretty easily, pretty foolproof. Um, hope this is useful to someone. Thank you for watching.